Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars. Learn the Sky is now on Patreon, so if you would like to support this channel in order to learn more about the sky, please visit our Patreon account. The link is listed below. We are also offering new online courses, so if you're interested in learning about the sky in greater detail and would like a guide to help you walk through the sky, please visit learnthesky.com and check out our online courses. Welcome. In this video, we will be reviewing the constellation Delphinus. Delphinus, which is Latin for dolphin, is a small but very distinctive constellation that appears in the later summer and early autumn months. As with any constellations, there are a variety of myths and origins that surround this constellation. Here you can notice the other constellations that surround Delphinus. We have Sagitta the arrow, Aquila the eagle, and Antinous, which is no longer recognized as a constellation. But all of these, particularly Aquila, can be used to help find Delphinus in the sky. There are multiple mythology stories about Delphinus, and most of them depict the dolphin as a friend to the gods or humans in the story. One legend involves the courtship of the mermaid Amphitrite by Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea. As he was courting Amphitrite, he rode on the back of a dolphin. When she agreed to be his wife, he put the dolphin up in the sky as a sign of gratitude. Another legend of Delphinus refers to that of Arion, a Greek poet who is also very skilled at playing the harp. The legend states that Arion was in danger of being thrown overboard by sailors trying to rob him, but first he played a song so beautiful it attracted the pod of dolphins, and when he was thrown overboard the dolphins carried him to safety. Now that we're familiar with the mythology of Delphinus, let's take a look at its distinctive pattern. So. As you look at this photo, the first thing that probably stands out to you is the bright star on the right side. This star is called Altair, and it's a part of a larger constellation called Aquila the Eagle. And this star is part of a larger asterism called the Summer Triangle, which we will review. If you can find Altair, you can definitely find Delphinus, which is this diamond shape with a little tail on the end of it. And if we take a look at when it's traced out, that's what it looks like. So you have Aquila and Altair, Sagitta the arrow, and Delphinus the dolphin. Here's another snapshot. And you can, you can kind of imagine how they saw a dolphin out of this. It does have that kind of curved back, just like the animal does itself. And here is where the constellation is. But if we zoom in, you can see that diamond shape with the tail on the end. Here's another practice shot for you. This one, there's a ton of stars in it, but focus in on the brightest star in the picture. If you can find that bright star, that is the star Altair. So knowing where Delphinus is close to Altair, hopefully you should be able to find it. And this is where it is. So we have Altair with Aquila, we have Sagitta the arrow right here, and Delphinus. And Delphinus also has another asterism. The diamond shape has also been called Job's coffin. So that's another asterism within this tiny constellation. So now that you're familiar with the pattern of Delphinus, let's go over some strategies that you can use to help you find this constellation. So here you're looking at the summer triangle and you should be able to identify the three bright points in the photograph. If you can, you're looking at the three bright stars of the summer triangle, which we have Vega, Deneb, and Altair. So knowing where Altair is, can you start to look for Delphinus? You want to look for that diamond shape with the little tail on the end. And if you are looking and looking and you can find it, this is where it's located. So if you can find Cygnus, which is right here, Okay, and we have Lyra up here, Aquila the eagle is right here, Delphinus is right next to Altair. So another strategy that I like to use to find Delphinus is using Pegasus. So I really like this map because it details one of the ways in which you can find Delphinus. If you can find the great square of Pegasus in the sky and you can identify from here, the, the head of Pegasus, you can use the, the head of Pegasus to sort of slingshot you right to Delphinus. 
So you can go right here and that's where you'll find it. So if you're struggling to find the dolphin, wait for Pegasus to come out and use the horse's head to get you there. And I'll show you an example of what this looks like. Here is one image. You've got the large, and, and the, the great square Pegasus is huge in the sky. It takes up a lot of space. So you wanna use the head right here to point you right to Delphinus. And I do have a practice shot. This is, I just started taking uh, pictures with my phone. It's not the greatest. Um, as I was taking pictures with my phone, I thought they look so awesome on the little tiny screen. But when you actually put them on the screen, um, it doesn't turn out as well as I would like, not like those professional shots, but it's enough to see the great square of Pegasus and hopefully its head. So I'm gonna point it out for you here. That's where the great square is. So hopefully you're seeing that great square. And then here's where you would use the head. And if you would keep continuing in this direction off the screen, Delphinus would be right over here. So Pegasus is not an easy constellation to shoot in the sky because it is so large. But again, use that head right there to point you to Delphinus. Now that you know what Delphinus looks like and how to find it, let's take a look at the bright stars. So Delphinus is a small, fairly faint constellation, but easy to see. And the bright stars, the Alpha and Beta star, are named Suolosin and Rotenev. And the, the names of these are very interesting with their origins. So if you would take a look at these two, if we zoom up close, Okay, we have this one right here that's the brightest, and this one here. And the interesting origin of these names is that it's a Latinized form of Niccolo Cacciatore, who is assistant director of the Palermo Observer Observatory in Italy in 1814. And really, these star names are just written backwards. So Suolosin is really Nicholas written backwards and Rotenev is Venatar written backwards. So a very interesting way to get your name in the sky. Um, this is really the only star names in which this has happened with, but just a little fun fact for you as you point out the stars of Delphinus. Our final section of this video will review the celestial objects that are situated within the boundaries of Delphinus. So if we take a look at the star map for this constellation, you can see the pattern right here, and then the celestial objects. We have a star cluster right near the diamond shape. We have another globular cluster towards the tail end, and then a nebula, nebula right here up in the corner of the boundary. So if we take a look at these, um, NGC, which stands for New General Catalog, 6934, and 7006. These are both globular star clusters. And just to review what globular star clusters are, is they're typically hundred, they can be thousands to hundreds of thousands of stars that are all held together by gravity, and they're typically made of older type stars. So you see them orbiting around, um, around the Milky Way galaxy, around the center of it. So their location and age and number of stars are different. We compare them to open star clusters, which are typically younger, um, have fewer stars, and don't have this spherical shape. So try, when you look at Delphinus, to find these two different globular star clusters. And finally, we have the Blue Flash Nebula. This is a 15-minute combined exposure of the Blue Flash Nebula um, in the constellation Delphinus. And you can see right here, this is where it's at. Um, and actually, some stars were, um, some brighter stars were actually removed out of this photo just so you can see where this is situated. Um, this is a pretty hard object to see, so don't be discouraged if you can't find it. Um, but you can always try. One final celestial object that you won't be able to see in the sky, but you can at least think about it and imagine it, is 18 Delphi B. This is an extrasolar planet approximately 238 light years away in the constellation of Delphinus. Its name is also Arion in reference to the Greek poet and musician. This is a very interesting planet and if we look at some statistics about it, it's this large gas giant that orbits around a yellow giant star in the constellation of Delphinus. It takes 
about 993 days in order for the planet to go around that star. And it's a very massive and very dense planet. And it's estimated that its mass is that of 10 Jupiters or 3,274 Earths. So as you can see, that's a very, very large planet and very different from what we see in our own solar system. And it was discovered in 2008. So as you're looking at Delphinus, maybe you can just imagine um, this huge giant gas planet that exists within that arena. So to wrap up our video on Delphinus the dolphin, it is best seen in the autumn and winter months. You can even see it towards the tail end of summer, but its classification is that of a seasonal constellation. The best way to find it is finding the great square of Pe Pegasus and using the horse's head to point straight to Delphinus. You can also look for the bright star Altair in the summer triangle in order to help you find it as well. The asterism inside it is called Job's Coffin, right here, and there are two globular star clusters in it and one nebula, and a extrasolar planet, which you won't be able to see, but at least you know it's there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave some comments. I'd also like to give a big thank you to David Coughlin in the UK for donating some of his pictures for this video. Thank you so much, David. Your help is really appreciated. Please come back to Learn the Sky to learn more about the different constellations, and we hope to see you soon.